Shukran, Sayyid al-Rais. Thank you, Mr. President. My delegation would like to express its position regarding item 128D before the General Assembly and the draft resolution in document A slash 73 slash L.23 titled Cooperation between the United Nations and the League of Arab States. As you know, ladies and gentlemen, my country, the Syrian Arab Republic, was among the first founders of the League of Arab States in March 1945, before the establishment of the United Nations. And then the founders of the League decided to entrust it with tasks many tasks and responsibilities, notably maintaining the independence of member states, cooperation among Arab countries in economic, culture, social and health areas. Also preserving the independence of Arab states, serving their interests, liberating Arab states that were unindependent, as well as cooperation with international organizations to maintain international peace and security. Despite the significant developments in the world and the Middle East, including the occupation of Palestine, displacement of millions of its people, the occupation of Syrian Arab Golan. Despite all of this, the League of Arab States for decades have continued to struggle to maintain its role and status as well as its credibility as a regional organization that brings together the governments of Arab states and defends the rights and interests of its peoples who have one blood, language, and destiny. The organization have continued to reflect the historical, civilizational, interactive Arab role within the framework of international relations. However, the last decade has seen a serious setback in the performance of the League of Arab States. It is, again, a serious setback that was due to the fact that a number of limited governments of member states of this organization, these countries that have huge economic revenues generated by oil and gas, the governments of these countries have decided to submit to foreign dictations and schemes that run counter to Arab interests and threaten the concept of collective Arab national security. Same governments have decided to control working mechanisms within the framework of the League of Arab States through attracting by money and through uh, political polarization in order to resolve their political differences with countries within and outside the organization through harnessing the mechanisms of work of the organization to serve their own agendas and policies. We in the Syrian Arab Republic are a country of principle. We don't level accusations or uh, uh, false assessments. We take our responsibilities seriously and when we express our position we provide evidence, realities and legal foundations. Therefore, when we say that the resolution or the decision taken by the Council of the League of Arab States at the level of foreign ministers on the 12th of November 2011 to suspend the membership of Syria in the League was an illegitimate decision. And when we say this, we base our argument on the Charter of the League of Arab States that states clearly 
that suspension of any member state is only possible at a summit meeting and with a unanimous decision by all member states. And on this legal ground, the Syrian Arab Republic continues to reject this politicized decision. And we don't recognize any legal or political effects thereof. And we would like to reiterate here that the responsibility to retract this decision is borne by those who breached the charter of the League of Arab States when this decision was taken. The second fact that uh, many may not know here in this chamber is that the League of Arab States, of course, has breached, breached the Charter of the United Nations and the relevant General Assembly resolutions when in November 2011 it imposed unilateral coercive economic measures against the Syrian people. These measures amount to an economic blockade in many sectors, notably financial, trade, banking, investment, transport, aviation, and media sectors. These measures were punitive, pu punitive measures against Syrian citizens who chose to stand by their country and their government in the face of extremist Wahhabist religious terrorism that is supported and financed by a limited number of governments of members of the Arab League. And on this legal ground, we in the Syrian Arab Republic continue to reject the decision which the Arab League was imposed to take to impose, was forced to take to impose a le an economic blockade against Syria. And we hold responsible those who took, uh, who took this decision we hold them responsible for the economic, humanitarian, financial consequences borne by the Syrian people. At the same time, the Syrian Arab Republic will always recall and highly appreciate that a significant number of member states of the League of Arab States rejected this unjust economic blockade imposed on the Syrian people. The third fact that many know here is that the Syrian Arab Republic responded in December 2011 to the initiative of the Arab League to send a team of Arab observers to different Syrian territories. Although the Syrian government knew the ill and premeditated intention of governments of some member states of this league. There is something that some here may not know, which is the chair of the League of Arab States at that time and its secretariat ignored and buried <coughs> the report prepared by the head of the uh, team of Arab observers in 2012 because this report concluded inter alia that there are foreign powers that are seeking to negatively interfere in the situation in Syria. We colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, can give you a laundry list of facts on the decisions, resolutions and positions that were imposed on the League of Arab States over the past eight years as regards the situation in Syria. These positions and resolutions were imbalanced and reflect uh, the hegemony of a country or two over decision making and positions in this regional organization. At the same time, we underscored confidently from this rostrum that the vast majority of member states of the League of Arab States 
continue to disapprove of these resolutions that were adopted against Syria in a manner that runs counter to the position of the vast majority of member states of the League of Arab States. The Syrian people, and this is the, f the fourth fact, will never forget or forgive that a, the governments of a limited number of member states of the League interfered in the internal affairs of Syria and they were directly implicated in supporting uh, terrorist army terrorist groups, attracting them, recruiting, financing, and armed them. Tens of thousands of FTFs were recruited and sent to fight in the ranks of Daesh, Al-Qaeda, and the Nusra Front, and other armed terrorist groups which these governments falsely described as moderate opposition. In fact, these are terrorist groups that have the same extremist terrorist religious ideology that advocates the killing of others, usurping their funds, property, demolishing their houses, and arsoning their land. In this respect, my delegation has a categorical reservation over paragraph 67 of the report of the Secretary General contained in document A-73-328 on the existence of contacts and coordination between the United Nations and the League of Arab States regarding the situation in Syria. My country does not see a role for the League of Arab States related to the situation in Syria. As long as this role of the Arab League continues to be hijacked and subject to the policies and practices uh, of a limited number of governments of member states who are financially and economically powerful. And as uh, we said, these policies and practices continue to be ongoing and they are premised on political and military investment in extremist religious terrorism and hampering prospects for political solution to the situation in Syria. This is also premised on serious interference and de destructive interference in the, uh, in the internal affairs of Syria. Uh, Mr. President, my country has suffered from an unprecedented uh, global terrorism and Syria has paid a dear price in terms of the lives of its people, their economic, industrial and agricultural dividends that they spent long decades to make. However, In the Syrian Arab Republic, we continue to believe that the League of Arab States can recover its role and credibility if now it conducts a serious and comprehensive review of its work over the past decade so that this organi regional organization can once anew resume its role and responsibilities as an organization that really serves collective Arab interests and national collective security of the Arabs. And in this respect, we continue to hope that the Arab League will positively engage with the situation in Syria. And we hope that this will be effected through coordination and direct cooperation with the Syrian government so that the efforts of our, of our government are supported in order to ensure defeating terrorism, return of refugees and displaced, reconstruction, reconstruction and ending foreign occupation. In closing, my, the position of my country is not aimed against the League of Arab States. We were among the first founders of this organization. Uh, Syria 
has always had an Arab identity and affiliation through our acts and policies. Our, our position is principled that proceeds from our keenness on a regional organization that is hoped to bring together Arab states to serve and protect their interests and to reject interference in their internal affairs and to endeavors to achieve socioeconomic development of all its member states without discrimination or exception so that no one is left behind. For all these reasons, the Syrian Arab Republic requests a recorded vote on draft resolution A-73-L23. slash slash I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of the Syrian Arab Republic. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Norway.